taxonomic hierarchy hierarchy is a system of uh, you know the ordered groupings isn't it for example in an organization you will see that uh, organizational hierarchy so taxonomic hierarchy is nothing but different groups uh, of the taxa you know it could be at the, the genus level family order so that is what you call it as hierarchy in the taxonomy so as we have already seen that such uh, you know the rank in the taxonomy the hierarchical ranks like order order at a higher level or domain at the deepest level uh, is kind of furious you know so it is uh, uh, it's 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 furious in the sense that it is not really natural you know, it's artificial and that is why we now have a rankless system of classification called phyloclade in which uh, this hierarchy uh, doesn't have any ranks you know so taxon or taxa doesn't mean it's only this at the species level it could be uh, you know at the higher order or as well or levels of the hierarchy as well you know and also it, it need not be extend species extend means living it could be extinct uh, only we have the proof either in a fossil record or by the parsimony method you know we can uh, reconstruct the sequences of the extinct species right hypothetical taxonomic group in in a phylogenetic tree the internal nodes represent these hypothetical taxonomic groups you know we do have proof but we don't have hard proof hard evidence in the form of fossils you know so there's a hierarchy of these taxa from the broadest to most specific that much is certain but ranks are arbitrary you know so domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus or species, you know, so of course that is artificial and arbitrary which uh, I told you and the domain is the broadest taxon, the, the domains uh, in the Carl Woosie systematics, there are three domains, right, and uh, we, have, we are still following the same domain system, right, uh, that is archaea, eubacteria and eukaryotes. So in one sense, it's because of uh, confirmation bias, because uh, Carl Woosey was an American archaeobacteriologist, you know, or archaeobiologist. So because he is an archaeobiologist, uh, you know, his pet taxa was uh, archaeobacteria. And uh, he thought that, okay, they are very important. Let us put the entire domain, one third of the entire diversity of Earth, just for the archaeobacteria. Of course, he had got proof to substantiate his reasoning. You know so yeah it's nothing is certain things keep on changing right now we have we are following this six kingdom classification of the cavalier smith from oxford and uh, well who knows within the next few years we will be having a completely different kind of classification system as the new evidence comes in you know and in in botany we have division while for animals it is phylum that is only uh, the difference here then inside division we have class and order family genus and finally species which is really uh, you know specific so by the way the genus and species are the two names used to identify specific organisms in the binomial uh, you know classification while division is for the plants right and if you look at the standard suffix you know you can actually just look looking at the suffix you can guess out what would be the taxonomic hierarchy that is a level for example any name ending a l e s ales is an order you know while r c a a c a e is a family so genus doesn't have anything it is usually it follows the specific epithet in terms of the latin grammar you know so yes yeah, so that is that's important and genus and species can be anything right but species the family is rca while order is ales and class is opsida you know for example uh, the acer rubrum is a red maple its family is uh, or the, the the division is basically embryophyta right so phylum or division usually have phyta while kingdom is bionta class is opsida right so let us see its kingdom is a viridae plantae right the green plants and phylum is embryophyta and there is a subphylum which is the tracheophytina you know or tracheophytes which is having the vessels isn't it so it's vascular plant then the class class usually have opsida so that is why angiospermopsida that is angiosperm order usually have ales right so that is why sapindales family aceae right sapindaceae then genus and species so this is how we can uh, guess out what would be the 
you know the hierarchical level by looking at the standard suffix right so suffix is something that you're writing after uh, the, the the noun while prefix is before the noun isn't it for example doctor you know or professor these are uh, you know prefix is not mr and mrs all this suffix is later like uh, esque isn't it uh, yes yeah, so uh, for the for humans for example you know we have got different uh, uh, classification uh, you know hierarchical level domain is eukarya then animalia chordata mammalia primate hominidae homo and homo sapiens which we have already described now each of this one is defined for example chordata is defined by certain shared derived characters you know that is called synapomorphic characters so synapomorphic characters are really important these are homologous characters and because we are defining these category based on synapomorphic traits these are natural system you know so these have to be shared derived it is it should not be ancestral you know remember plesiomorphic or simplesiomorphic character those are ancestral so if you use as ancestral traits to define then there is going to be a paraphyletic group you know so for example reptilia is a paraphyletic group but if you use synapomorphic traits like this to define a group then all these groups are monophyletic you know that means natural groups right so in uh, phylogenetic systematics we use only synapomorphic traits to define the the groups and that is the reason why these groups are all monophyletic groups you know and of course uh, you know the, the if you look at the hierarchy uh, you know so you you will see that these three animals uh, you know of course you can call it as a plant as well or an animal because it's not a photosynthetic right it's a heterotrophic in nutrition uh, the fungi so you see that these three things are actually meeting not even at the kingdom level isn't it so the kingdom is fungi and animalia or rather, rather it is metazoa isn't it and now these two are quite related because it has the same family philidae so that way you will see that uh, you know uh, the, the most recent common ancestor can guess about it so the kingdoms uh, there are actually the uh, you know this is uh, some of the uh, uh, very well known kingdom though it is little bit old protista fungi plantae and animalia uh, of the domain eukaryotes well we also have got prokaryotes right so these are uh, you know these are the, the most common uh, kingdoms and if you look at the classification system, so all started with Linnaeus, right? Carl Linne, the, the Swedish father of the taxonomy, isn't it? And for him, it's only two kingdom, Vegetabula and Animalia. And of course, the, the microbes, uh, he, he didn't knew about the microbes. Anton van Leeuwenhoek, although he was earlier than Linnaeus, he, he never heard of this, uh, the bacteria. So he didn't treat it. Then comes Heckel in 1866, three kingdom, Protista, plantae and animalia right and in different kingdom the protista how it is being treated is uh, you know it, it it changes right prokaryotes and monera then you bacteria archaebacteria then uh, uh, everything together as a uh, you know bacteria and then protista pro, pro, protostista protista and uh, chromista as well so the, this this is where the, the most of the differences are between various classification systems uh, coming to the Caton, 1825, two empires. So empire is only uh, is uh, present in the case of Caton's uh, 1825, prokaryotes and eukaryotes, which is kind of similar to the domain system of Carl Woosie, which is coming later in 1990. Prokaryotes, but instead of prokaryote, he put up archaea as one of the domain, you, bacteria as another domain. Of course, these two are prokaryotes than eukarya so it is kind of similar to the Carl Woosie's 1990 system then comes copiland in 1938 uh, followed by Whitaker in uh, 1969 quite quite similar copiland is monera protostista plantae again protostista and animalia and now for Whitaker, second protostista is basically fungi so this Whitaker's 1969 five kingdom uh, is still many of the textbook follow this uh, you know we take a pre Carl Woosie's uh, system right maybe you might have studied that in your college the five kingdom classification of we it's very very 
uh, popular. But of course, it has been uh, eclipsed by Carl Wuss's 1977 followed by 1990. So this one is obsolete. It's better to look at this one, 1990, which is three domain. Uh, yes, so it is uh, widely used. So right now what we use is Cavalier six, uh, Smith's Six Kingdom plus Carl Wuss's three domain. So the domain first, then kingdom. You know, so it's not that the, the domain is completely gone. No, the domain still exists. And now you can see that the kingdoms are eukarya. Uh, I mean, inside this domain eukarya, there are at least five kingdoms. Uh, of course, this domain bacteria and archaea is together forms the one kingdom bacteria. Then protozoa, chromista, plantae, fungi, and animalia. So chromista is very interesting. It is just, it's like the brown algae, you know. So all those diatoms and brown algae belongs to Chromista. So Chromista itself, uh, Cavalier Smith erected as a separate uh, kingdom, you know. Again, that suffers a confirmation bias because Cavalier Smith is a protozoologist who worked on Chromista. So for him, Chromista is very important, you know. Uh, uh, that is the reason, the rationale that why he want to erect a separate kingdom for Chromists, you know. Same reason of the Carl Wussi also. He was an archaeobacteriologist and that is the reason archaea is the highest level, you know, the uh, the domain, you know, that is the reason for it. Now coming to botanical, of course, the bot, you know, plants belongs to plantae or chromista as well, right? These two things, right? And also protozoa sometimes. And even bacteria plants, you know, can you guess which, which plant is bacteria? Cyanobacteria, isn't it? It is photosynthetic. So uh, the definition of plant is very vague. Many people, they interpret based on what they like. You know, you might think that, okay, plant means only the terrestrial plants. How about the the, uh, the marine plants? So how about cyanobacteria? Or is, is it plant or a bacteria? You know, of course, uh, it's very loose. There is no commonly accepted definition like fish, you know, or monkey. <laughs> You know, so of course, or butterfly. What is butterfly? So there is no butterfly, isn't it? So it's there are like thousands of species of butterfly, isn't it? Uh, and at least a butterfly is a monophyletic group, right? At the uh, order level, it is it's the same. But for plant, it's highly confusing, isn't it? So in in a uh, in a uh, loose sense, you can call the the cyanobacteria as a plant. And of course, chromist also as a plant because there are so many big, big kelp, you know, the brown algae. It is also a plant, isn't it? Though it doesn't have a, uh, it doesn't look like, uh, you know, green, isn't it? But still it's photosynthetic. So in one sense, plant, you can define it as a photosynthetic organism. You know, there are exceptions, but uh, generally it is photosynthetic organism is the plant. So in that definition, cyanobacteria is also a plant. You know, so back the botanical system starts for, from Bentham and Hooker, then Cronquist, and finally we have APG4. APG4 is the only monophyletic classification system, while the previous Cronquist as well as Bentham and Hooker are based on the morphology. So as I told you earlier, this is kind of similar. APG4 and Bentham and Hooker or Cronquist are very similar. Only certain problems are there. Uh, the reason is that whatever you look alike are mostly because of the shared uh, derived characters, you know. But sometimes uh, the morphology, the gross morphology can betray the real genealogical uh, similarities between the organisms, the tax size, isn't it? So that is why APG4 is basically angiosperm phylogeny group. Uh, that is only for the angiosperm, you see. And yeah, so APG system is based on the molecular data and uh, APG names only monophyletic groups, you know, and that is why it is natural system, right? So Bentham and Hooker, Cronquist, APG, so what are these systems basically? It's all about recognition of how many uh, families. So usually for a flowering plant, the family is really important, you know, family of the flowering uh, plant. So if you know about family and its characteristic, that is synapomorphic traits, and how to identify this family, then you're well off in the plant taxonomy, isn't it? So, yeah, so Hooker and Bentham, uh, you know, there is a, especially Hooker uh, is very, very interesting person. And he had also been to Antarctica, just like me. 
uh, you know so he was part of this ross expedition to antarctica and he's the first botanist who had been to antarctica and he has immensely contributed to the antarctic sciences you know so this is his famous book it's called the uh, uh, antarctic uh, flora antarctica you know uh, the botany of the antarctic voyage that is a full title of it he first went in mount uh, i mean hms erebus and then later he went in uh, hms terror you know so that is a uh, that is expedition of this uh, uh, this guy uh, hooker you know so on uh, so it's basically both these expedition went under the captainship of first uh, captain sir james clark ross very famous english explorer and a voyager and that is uh, under his name is that we have a sea a big sea called ross sea opposite side we have another sea called weddell sea both of these are just you know uh, facing each other and that divides east antarctica and west antarctica you know and there is a trans antarctic mountain also in between so ross sea is a very big sea mostly it is covered with ice and yes yeah, so ross is the captain under which he went in joseph dalton hooker you know and then of course he was a very close friend of uh, uh, charles darwin and yes yeah, so very interestingly you know and he was also uh, yeah, he was a herbe curator of the q herbarium and he had a lot of uh, problems with uh, you know the london's museum the british museum because before he established the q the british museum was the biggest herbarium in in the in the world you can say in in especially in the in the england then when the q came so you know they started having this rivalry you know and yeah, he was i mean he's a very well accomplished scientist and he became the 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 president of the the royal society of london you know and of course he's a fellow of uh, royal society's frs right and also yeah he described several of the species from antarctica for example dervilla dervilla antarctica it is when you reach antarctica you can see forests of this kelp it's a southern ocean kelp it is basically the brown algae and uh, yeah so in antarctica he collected several of the lichen especially pamelian lichen pamella you know so several of the lichen species uh, uh, and of course he collected and he brought back everything to his place in q you know and uh, also he had been to india especially sikkim and uh, tibet and assam you know and uh, yeah he spent almost 3 years collecting different samples from those regions and when he was in sikkim the king of sikkim uh, you know he thought that okay he is a co uh, british colonizer and he is an enemy and let us incarcerate him so he was under prison you know and uh, and all his samples were lost in sikkim and later he don't want to go back to sikkim so that is the reason he went to assam he did collect a lot of samples especially seeds of rhododendron himalayan rhododendron and he introduced that to the kew garden now you know in um, in england we have several they have several of these gardens of rhododendron and most of these rhododendrons are collected from uh, you know himalayas by uh, 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 you know the hooker right james hooker so yeah this is one of uh, uh, his collection rhododendron argentium so by this hierarchy is all about the taxons you see so most genera contains a number of similar species including many extinct species and of course the, the homo uh, while discussing about that homo in the evolutionary biology we said that of course we have several of the uh, species but most of the homo species except our own species is extinct and do you know why it went extinct because we killed <laughs> you know so uh, early on we killed all our cousins so that is the reason why we have only one modern humans and modern phylogenetic classification is based on the evolutionary relationship that is a shared derived character synapomorphic character forms the basis of phylogenetic systematics you know and uh, the biodiversity is not same across various taxa that is very important for example the insects have so much of the species diversity it's highly species you know species means number of non species are really high for the insect for example 751000 you know so that is 7 lakh right 7.5 lakh species of insects we know at the same time vascular plant the complete vascular plant is only 2. Point, uh, around 2.5 lakhs 
much lesser than what we know about insects you know and also it is closely related to how we define a species right so that is that is why we have several of the species concepts right and uh, uh, yeah this is one reason why we have got uh, you know th this kind of uh, uh, you know uh, un unequal distribution of the species diversity across the taxonomic lineages right so you know for example insects is too much almost more than a half of the pie of this uh, animalia while other animals is only 2.8 you know now for uh, you know for bacteria is only for 4800 you see kingdom u bacteria that doesn't mean that we you know that is the only thing available on earth no it just means that only for 4800 species we could able to culture and we could uh, you know formally describe so there are so many of the bacteria which we cannot even culture you know so only option for us to know about their diversity is culture independent methods like metagenomics you know so environmental dna sampling which you don't have to cultivate prior to sequencing you know so that is the reason and the diversity on the life is really precious isn't it and that is the reason why earth is very interesting place the only place where we have the confirmed life right so the most important characteristic of earth is its life uh, the biological aspect and the most important uh, in, uh, interesting aspect of life is that the diversity of it and how these are interrelated that is what is more more important you know it is not that just randomly distributed unrelated organism no these are all shared you know so uh, around 4, 4 3.8 billion years back one uh, incident happened that is called abiogenesis isn't it the origin of life so that particular uh, you know large last universal common ancestor which we now know it is a u bacteria not even archaea bacteria it's a u bacteria and from that bacteria the entire life originated so that is our great great ancestor that bacteria isn't it so how these are all interrelated that is what we study uh, what we study in uh, evolutionary biology you know and phylogeny you can reconstruct how these organisms are have been evolving for the last three billion years by drawing the tree of life you know so once you construct this phylogenetic tree it becomes very clear how these different taxa are interrelated you know 